Hey, thanks for the emails asking me about some of the stuff that I posted in Google Classroom. So I'm gonna make a gonna make a couple of videos going over a few simple things to help you get through some of the things that we posted. Uh, again, please, if you don't understand something, don't hesitate to uh, contact myself or Mr. Jones in Google Classroom, and we'll respond as quick as we can. Uh, so balancing chemical equations, probably the hardest thing, as I've told you, the hardest thing that we're going to do all year. But it's based off of the concept of the law of conservation of mass, which says that the amount of matter is neither created or destroyed in any chemical equation. Here's a chemical equation. The first thing that I want you to understand, there are two parts to the chemical equation. On the left side of the arrow is what we call the reactants. This is what goes in, separated by this, which is the yield sign. And then on the right side is what we call the product or the output. So one of the things that you gotta know is the left side of the chemical equation is the reactant. The right side of the chemical equation is the product separated by the yield sign. Got to know that. Left side is the reactant, right side is the product separated by the yield sign. So now let me erase, let me erase a couple of things off of here and let me show you how we solve this. Because remember, as I said, whatever goes in must be equal to whatever comes out. One of the things that we've done this year, uh, right before we went on this little hiatus, is we talked about counting atoms. So the first thing that you need to do before you can balance any equation is figure out what you already have in place and then we go from there. So as I do an inventory of this atom or this element, I've got two hydrogens. How do I know I have two? There's no, there no coefficient, but I do have a subscript saying that there are two H's. Another way that you could do this would be to just put tally marks on the side or on the bottom. Either way really doesn't matter. Uh, so I've got two hydrogen. I also have two oxygens. So I'm just going to do it both ways. Two hydrogens, two oxygens. On the left side, the reactant side, and then on the right side I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Just one. Okay, so that's the first thing. I did my inventory of what I have available. And as you can see, this is not equal. This is not equal. Well, I do have two hydrogens on this side, and I have two hydrogens on the right side. But on the reactant side, I have two oxygen, but I only have one oxygen on the product side. So that's not a balanced equation. So the first thing I have to do is make them equal. How would I do that? I want to be able to have the same number of oxygen on each side, uh, but what I do to the oxygen might also affect um, hydrogen in the, in, the, in the product side. So let me show you what, what we're going to talk about. Um, my oxygen is 2. My oxygen is 1 over here. So the first thing I need to do is find the number that they have in common. I have 2 oxygen here. So I'm going to make this a 2. Now, you cannot add subscripts. So notice I put it as a coefficient and not as a subscript. So I added the 2 as a coefficient. Now, when I put the two in front of the hydrogen, that also changed hydrogen. So now I have four. I have four hydrogen. How did I get that, Mr. Smith? Great question. Two times two is four. All right? So now, now that I put the two in front of the hydrogen, I also affected oxygen because oxygen is now two also. Two times one. And remember, if you don't see a number for a subscript, it is understood that it is one. So I have four hydrogen to oxygen. So now let me come over to this side. Okay, well, my hydrogen is now a 4. So what can I do to this hydrogen over here to make this a 4? 1, no. Let's put a 2 in here. 2. 2 times 2, so I'm going to go ahead and do the inventory all over again. 2 times 2 is 4. So now I have 4 hydrogens here. I'll do my tally marks up here. 4, 4. So on the reactant side, I have four hydrogens. On the product side, I have four. So my hydrogens are equal. And let's go ahead and look at the oxygen. Uh, I, need four ox I need two oxygen over here to match what I have on the product side. Uh, over there, I have two. Over here, I have two. So what coefficient could I put in here to make that two or to keep it as a two? Well, ideally, it would be one. And remember, we don't have to write ones. So this would be... The, uh, the coefficient that I would place in here, uh, 1 times 2 is 2. 
So this is the balanced equation, okay? Okay, so here's another, here's another equation. Remember, the first two things I need to do is identify my products and my reactants. So left side of the yield sign is my reactant. Got to know that. Reactant is the left side separated by the yield sign. And on the right side is what we call the product. Reactant, product. Reactant is on the left side. Product is on the right side. First thing I got to do, remember, is inventory. Inventory what I already have in place. So this time I'm just going to stick with the, uh, the tally marks. So I have four. Anybody not know how I got that? Because there's no coefficient in the front. I have a, a subscript. So phosphorus has four. I come over here to my oxygen. For my oxygen, no coefficient. So I have two because it has a two subscript. On the product side, I have two phosphorus and I have three oxygen. So none of these are balanced. So I'm going to figure out what coefficients I can do to make this a balanced equation. Remember, you cannot add subscripts, so we can never change these numbers. But what we can do is put coefficients in the front. And remember what the coefficient, coefficient whatever you do in the front, it applies to everything in that, in that, in that compound. So I have, let's start with the, the O's, the oxygen. I have two oxygen here. On the reactant side, I have three oxygens. On the product side, what's the first number that comes to your mind when you think of a number that they have in common? The first number that I think of when I think of two and three is six. So how can I make this a six? Uh, multiply it by two, multiply it by one. We're gonna put a three in here. So if I put a three in here, know what that does to this? That turns that into a six. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my tally marks. Three, four, five, six. All right, so now I have six oxygen on the right side. How do I turn this three into a six? Three, two, one. No, I'm going to multiply that by two because I put that as a, because I make that coefficient of a two. Now my oxygen is a two times three, which makes my oxygen six. But because I put a two in front of the P, the phosphorus, what has the phosphorus become? Remember, the coefficient is applied to everything in that compound. So I put a two in front of the P, uh, the, P, the P, phosphorus. So now I have to multiply that two times two, which gives me four phosphorus, all right? Uh, so my, my oxygens are equal because they are both six. Now I need to figure out what I need to do to my phosphorus on this side to make it equal to the four on that side. Um, well, great, I already have four. So since I already have a four, I would, leave, I would just leave this blank. But just for instructional purposes, I'm going to put a one in there so you can see that. And then I'll add or uh, multiply. One times four, uh, we'll give it four. So this is a balanced chemical equation. Hopefully this instructional video will help out. Um, please keep in track with what I have on Google Classroom. If you do not understand, again, please, please email myself or email Mr. Jones. And we will update or we'll try to, you know, do some other stuff to help this uh, more easy or get it easier for you as possible. Thank you.